Good morning, it's Gareth from Big Game Bikes. This morning, we're gonna fit a 1000 watt Bafan kit to this Rad Rhino. It's a really, really easy process and I'm gonna slowly do my best to talk you through the process of doing that. First things first, I got a box down here with the kit inside it. Let's open the box, let's have a look at all the different parts and, uh, and then let's get started. So when we open the box, there's, there's a lot going on inside the box. Let's just, uh, let's go through it and um, let's figure out what's going on. So in here, we've got the controller box, so that's fine. This is, this is the controller, so that's great. Um, we've got a rear light, okay. Over here is the pedal assist sensor. These are brake sensors, the display, and then inside here we have the one to five harness. So this is gonna go from the controller through the bicycle frame up to the handlebars for brakes and display and throttle and stuff. So that's cool. Oh, we've got a spare pedal assist sensor, awesome. And we've got a throttle. We've got a motor extension cable. Cool. Uh, we've got some brake levers, we're not going to need those, and we've got a light. Okay, and of course we've got the wheel. So let's, uh, let's get the wheel out, let's get everything uh, put together on the floor so that we can see how everything connects together. Um, and then that way when we put it on the bicycle, we know what needs to go where and what connects to what. This is the standard controller that you're probably familiar with. This is off of a rad runner um, so the three motor core wires on the inside on this particular Bafang connector are not as thick so this can handle 25 amps continuously whereas this can handle 35 amps continuously okay so let's look at all the parts that came with this kit let's connect them all together and give ourselves an idea of what's going on. So we've got the controller, that's great. That is going to connect to the motor. Okay. From the controller, we've then got the one to four harness. This is gonna go up to your handlebars for your brakes, your throttle and the display. That plugs in to that connector. Okay. And then, up on the handlebars, we've got throttle. I don't have the brakes with me, but the brakes are gonna go into that and the display is gonna go into that up on your handlebars. Awesome. Battery goes into this XT60 male connector. These are for the front and rear lights. I'm probably gonna cut those off and use a different type of connector, maybe an SM connector or something like that. And this final little wire over there is for our pass sensor, okay? Um, the reason I've gone for, for this pass sensor in particular is because a lot of people complain that the magnetic disc type connector brakes or whatever. I'll show you when this is on the bike. It's a much cleaner, much neater installation and really nice. Okay, so now, now we know what's going on. Let's take a look at the bike and let's get started. So let's talk about the steps that I'm gonna use to get this kit fitted. You can do this in any order. I personally start with the rear wheel because it's big and it's heavy and that's quite a, a laborious job, right? You, you wanna do that first. Then we look at where we're gonna position the controller. We feed the one to four cable up to the handlebars. We pop the display on and that's basically it. So wheel, controller, handlebars. So let's start with the rear wheel. We're gonna undo that nut 
follow the motor cable down, there's a couple of cable ties, undo those and then disconnect the motor connection over there. And then if we come around to this side, this is a, uh, oops, there we go, this is a trailer attachment. We need to undo the bolt in there and then we can drop the rear wheel out. I used an 18 mil spanner to undo the two nuts, wire cutters to undo the cable tie that was holding the motor connector in place, and now the wheel's off. Right, let's, uh, let's get this tire off, let's get this brake rotor off, and let's get it on the new wheel. There we go, perfect. Now we can put the inner tube on, we can put the tire on, we can put the new cassette on. So let's go. We've got the tire on, we've got the rotor on. We've got a new cassette on the back. This is 28 to 11. Now the kit does come with a selection of washers and spacers. So what we're gonna to need to do now is when we put this back on the bicycle, we need to ensure that we've got the right spacers in the right place. So what we've done is we've put a Finchie tire on the wheel, replacing this rad tire. And as you can see, this is a real nice meaty tire. Wheels back on, we've got the new cassette on. I removed the brake caliper on the other side just to make it easier to put the wheel back in. Let's take a closer look at the washers and the spacers and what have you and then we'll move on to the second part of this project. So over on this side I've taken the caliper off. Just in there you can see the washer. I've just used one and on this side I've used one washer. We've got one washer in there. So for the next part of this project we're gonna have to find all the cable ties that are hidden everywhere throughout this bicycle and start removing the old electrical system. It's not going to take long and uh, I'll come back once that's done. Now top tip, when you pull the original wiring harness through the frame to take it out of the bicycle, get a, a scrap piece of wire or get something, secure that to this end, to the bottom end of that one to five harness. So as you pull that wire through, you're pulling this wire through so that when we go to fit the new wiring harness, we can attach that to this and we can pull back through the frame. Okay, so down here is the connector that then runs up to the handlebars. Unplug that, grab your wire that we were talking about earlier and what we need to do is attach this wire to that just with some good old masking tape doesn't have to be neat and tidy just needs to be secure enough that it doesn't come loose inside the frame because if it does it's a real nightmare trying to get this pulled through. Okay. Okay, out comes the wire. And now we can connect the new one to four harness to this and pulling this wire, we can easily get it back through the frame. So now we just need to remove everything up here on the handlebars. Okay, and with the power of editing, we've stripped down the handlebars, and now it's time to start fitting the new display, which is gonna go in the middle over there. We're gonna put on new hydraulic brakes, we're gonna put on new grips, and of course we're gonna put on 
the new throttle. So I'll be back in five minutes when I've done that. We need to fit the pedal assist sensor. Now we can remove the controller. Now we're ready to feed the one to four cable through using the wire we used previously, all taped up. In it goes, super gently feed it through. Now we just very carefully pull it out of here. And there it comes. So now we can start feeding all the wires into the controller bag, connect up the motor, and just generally start tidying everything up. Right, so let's turn it on and have a look. Awesome, look at that display. Scroll through the pedal assist levels. Down the bottom here, we've got trip, time, odometer, range. This is obviously not accurate at the moment. The computer needs to learn about your riding style and your battery capacity and what have you. Maximum speed, average speed, and back to the trip. Press and hold the up button, the lights come on. What's also really cool is we do have the brake light feature as well. And brake lights. Running lights. And brake lights. Now, it does go without saying that when it comes to these kit installs, you will get need to get creative with some of the electrical connectors. For example, the front and rear lights, I used SM connectors because they're low voltage, low amperage, so you don't need anything fancy just to wire those directly to the controller. The controller originally came with bullet connectors to allow you to connect it to the battery. It did come with an adapter so that you can just plug it straight into an XT60 connector from the battery. I removed those and replaced that entire connection with an XT60 connector. The other thing that's worth bearing in mind is because this motor draws so much more power, I actually opened the battery and I've replaced the connection inside the battery with a 30 amp wire to match the rest of the system so that it's all nice and safe. We're all done. This build has been a great deal of fun. Let's go through all the different things that we did really quickly to remind ourselves of how easy it is. Take off the tire, inner tube, rotor, put those onto the new rim and motor, new freewheel, uh, oh, sorry, cassette. It's a cassette, not a freewheel. Um, pop that on, adjust the derailleur, remove the original controller, pop the new controller on, remove everything from the handlebars, new display, new grips. We, uh, we upgraded to hydraulic brakes on this bicycle at the same time. So that's all been done.